Hello and welcome to this month's episode of Out and About Art. I'm your host, Dion Spires. Harrison School for the Arts has a reputation for being an excellent audition-based public school focused on the arts right here in Polk County. Alumni have appeared in Broadway performances, touring theater productions, commercials, television shows, and so much more. Our community got a chance to see just a few of those alumni perform recently in their recital just last month on Harrison's campus. The proceeds from this performance went to benefit a current student funding the Legacy Scholarship. Stay tuned for some highlights and more information on the event. The performance tonight is the Harrison Alumni Recital. We called it a recital and as the planning progressed and as the interest grew it has become a full-blown production so it's more like a concert uh, or an event it's no longer just a small recital when we first started planning this we were afraid that we wouldn't have enough to fill a 30-minute performance and we have actually had so many alumni come back and say they want to be a part of this that we've started slating people for next year's performance this this recital we're so excited features alumni from all 26 years of Harrison's history. We're showcasing visual artists on the screens in the lobby, clips of, of their artwork. Um, we have dance, we have um, an Americana piece, we have uh, musical theater songs, we have classical songs, we have piano, uh, piano concerto, we have a cello octet. <laughs> we have, for the alumni that couldn't be present, we have acting reels, we have a, a dramatic presentation of a, of a original poem by one of our alumni. Um, we have commercials that some of our alumni have been in. Um, I, I, I could go on. I mean, it's just, it's different. You're going to see a little bit of everything. The concert is a fundraiser for our Legacy Scholarship and that was something that was very important to the Alumni Relations Committee. The Legacy Scholarship is designed to recognize a graduating senior who not only demonstrates academic and artistic achievement but also someone who recognizes the importance of a Harrison education. Last year we did a simple GoFundMe. It was fine. We raised the money. We gave away a scholarship. And this year we thought we'd do something different and we'd do something that we could give back to the community as well and then also showcase what Harrison alumni are doing in the community or in their own communities uh, or across the globe. Our intent really is to recognize that student. What better way to do that than bring alumni back who have kept the arts a part of their lives? This place gave me so many cool opportunities. Um, and I want that for people who come after me. You know what I mean? How can I elevate, you know, future artists in some way? Um, and if it's raising money by, you know, dancing just, you know, for a little bit, then I'll do it. I'll do anything, you know? It, every time that I get on that stage, the memories do uh, come back. Uh, it, it's, it's a little overwhelming because you remember the time, the fun that you had, but also the hard work that went into it. And um, knowing that you'll never be back in that, in that uh, time of your life again. So grab that moment whenever you're on stage. Grab that moment whenever you're with your favorite professor or your favorite teacher. And um, that's kind of 
where I get to when I'm on a stage. I will remember things and I'll know that I'll never get those situations back again. So when I'm on that stage, make the best of it and, and grab that moment. The alumni who are performing are not just professional actors, professional dancers, professional mu musicians. We have business owners, we have moms, dads, teachers. We have a civil rights attorney from Washington DC returning to be a part of this performance. So we have people from all walks of life who have actively kept the arts in their lives. And I think that's what's really important for our students to see is that you don't have to pursue a career in the arts to keep the arts in your life. Harrison taught me that we could do both. Um, we could all do both. Uh, you could pursue your career in something that uh, you could uh, make you know, profit from and then also do your, do your arts and do what you're passionate about. So I think that's very important to know that, uh, that they, that for them to know that you can do both. You, you can do what you love and also do what you need to do to survive. A lot of times we get in our heads that like, life should happen a certain way. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna come here, you're gonna train, you're gonna be the ballet dancer, you're gonna leave, you're gonna join that ballet company, it's gonna be great. And my life did not do that at all. I teach a lot and I always like to say that dance can be a part of your life. There is no cut off for me. Um, and um, it's always great to come back and show them that like you can still do it no matter what age you are. It can be really helpful to have a very uh, a vivid visual or an actual example of someone who said, hey, what you learned here, the skills that you're learning, um, the, the, the time management that you're practicing, um, the dedication, the discipline, that can pay off in a lot of different ways. And so these, these alumni coming back and performing, so I do think is important. And I think it goes a long way uh, to giving our students a sense of purpose uh, for what it means to be a Harrison student. We just want to show them that all of your hard work does pay off, but it is hard work. It really is. There's no easy way around it. Each one of us has sweated buckets of uh, blood, sweat, and tears to get to where we are, and we've been pushed. And so we are doing this to show them that everything that they're doing right now at Harrison uh, is for a reason. It's to make them a better person. It's to make them a better uh, contributor to society. It's to make them a better individual all around, a better artist. And uh, we're showing them what we went through it was all worth it. Not only do we have the Harrison Alumni Relations that has supported this, you know, this project, we have the Harrison, uh, the Harrison faculty have supported us, Dr. Ward, um, Mr. Kimball, uh, they have put their own time and energy into this. Barb Erickson, she is on the Philanthropic Committee, she has been a wonderful um, uh, mentor for us. Uh, you know, just coaching us through and giving us perspective as we've been putting this project together. Not to mention we have students that are backstage helping with our stage manager who's also an, al an alumni. We have students back there who are helping her and they're getting valuable experience just working with her because sh this is what she does for a living. So um, we need, you know, to thank, I just want to thank everybody that has supported us that's not on the stage because it, it really couldn't be done without, without everyone everyone's help and encouragement. It's been a huge undertaking, but we, we have plans to, to not let this be the only one. There was so much talent on that stage that night, and I'm certainly hoping for more alumni performances in the future. To keep up with Harrison and what their current students are up to, visit their website. That's www.harrisonarts.com. I'm on location now in the second floor lobby of the beautiful historic Polk Theater in Lakeland. This theater has served as the venue for the Play It Forward Polk benefit performance in recent years, and that performance is happening again right here this month. 
Here to tell me more about the organization and their event are Amanda Bryce and Ron Tomlin. How are y'all doing today? Doing good. Very How about well, you? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for coming out here to the Folk Theater to meet with me to talk about the event because I'm so excited about it. We're so excited that you're excited <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> We're happy to be here, Deanne. So let's talk about um, the organization Play It Forward Polk. I know that you guys are a nonprofit in the area. Um, I don't know how many people know about you guys because I didn't know about you guys until last year. What do you guys do? What is the goal of the organization and how long have you been around? Well, we started in 2014. It was the idea of a couple of local musicians and uh, the idea was to raise money to help the kids in the Polk County school system who cannot afford instruments have access to instruments. Uh, nationwide, you've probably noticed a decline in funding for arts and we're big believers in live music and in the arts. and Anything we can do to encourage those kids, we're going to do it. And that's, that's how this thing got started. It uh, started with five people who put on the first event. We now have a board of nine. Uh, we're going on our, what this be, our fourth, fourth event? Our fourth, our fourth event here. And we've actually had a couple of other events. But we're all about raising money to help kids in the school system who would otherwise not be able to enjoy the arts, enjoy music. Really, the group started with some local musicians who had a love for music and wanted to get together and jam. And the money from that jam session turned into this 501c3, which is pretty huge. It's really a bunch of local musicians up on stage donating their time and talent to benefit all the local kids that really want to play. It's a, it's a big thrill for the local musicians to play on this stage. I mean, you think about the history of this theater. Elvis Presley played yeah, here. I mean, you know, so if you're if you're a local rock band, to be able to say you played on the same stage that Elvis played on, it means a lot to them, and they put their heart and soul into it. Uh, they all play for free. These bands play for us for no cost, uh, and they seem to love doing it. We always have a list of bands who want to play every year. So there's definitely a passion amongst not only the board who's involved with it, but the people who get involved to put on the event. Oh, yeah. What you guys are doing for the kids in the public school, I think is a beautiful thing because I was involved in music all through um, middle school and high school, actually, and I played the alto sax in middle school, and I know you don't just get the instrument and pick it up. You do have to rent it from the school and pay. There is some um, funding that goes into it. So to give that to the students is really awesome. Um, so let's talk about what the event is. You guys said that you've been doing it for, this is your fourth year. We are fourth year. Here. Well, what happens at the event? What, what can people expect if they're coming out to the event? Well, this year it's, it's really an eclectic mix of a lot of great local talent. Uh, we've got the Brett Foster Band, Dan Signore Project, Glass House Point, which is a group of uh, younger uh, musicians that grew up locally here playing in the school system. Um, we've got Cat and the Dogs and Soul to Earth, and then a handful of high school, middle school bands will be playing as well. Yeah, what we're doing, in the past we've tried to have two stages set up and while one band was playing we were setting up another band and it got a little confusing so this year we're doing it a little differently. We'll actually have one main stage band when they get, they'll play a 45 minute set. When they get done the curtain closes and we're going to have a youth band, one of the school bands, out in front of the curtain playing for about a half an hour while we're setting up for the next band. So. It's going to be almost continuous music, a mixture of the professional bands, local professional bands, and some youngsters who may constitute professional bands in the future. Yeah, that's, that's great to bring that full circle to show these students in the public school, show what, you're, what you guys are providing and what you guys are helping with. It's really, really cool. And I'm sure that the opportunity for those students is awesome to be able to play on the same stage as these professional bands. Yeah. I can't even imagine what that's like for them. And a lot of these students that are playing have, will actually be playing with instruments that they've received from Play It Forward Polk. That's awesome. So you guys every year have had this event for the last four years, um, and as well as other fundraising efforts and donations and that sort of thing. What kind of impact have you guys had since you started as far as your fundraising efforts go? Well, year to date, we've raised about $50,000 for the cause. Wow. And so all of that money um, goes towards funding these, or these, funding these instruments for students? About 95%. 95%. And how do you guys go about finding the students that are in need of these instruments? Well, we, we depend on the schools to actually do that. Uh, 
we deal through a lady, Beth Cummings, at the Polk County School Board, and she's in contact with all of the band directors. And the band directors know the students in their schools that need help. So the band director submits, call it a request, to Beth. No name. She doesn't want to know the names of the students, but it's strictly, here's the circumstances. And from that, then Beth will take some money and doles it out as well as she can. Uh, the Polk Education Foundation is who we actually send our funds to, and they write a check to whoever's going to furnish the instruments for the kids. The uh, system works well. Uh, Beth's measure of success is that so far she hasn't had a request she couldn't meet. So we're, we like that. We like to hear that. Yeah, that's definitely a good thing. So from your perspective, um, obviously being on the board, there's something that, that drives you guys to get involved with this, with this event. What, what is the passion behind it? Why is this important for the two of you to be involved? Take it. Well, I got involved through one of the board members, and I think uh, what made it really resonate for me was growing up in a house full of music. I've always had a love for it. But then being a single parent and having a child that wanted to play an instrument and struggling to find the funds to afford it um, really made me appreciate the efforts of this, this organization and want to be a part of it. And me, I, I grew up in Polk County. I came through the Polk County school system playing music, uh, junior high, and back in those days it was called junior high, not middle school, but <clears throat> if that tells you anything. Uh, but I played drums through school, so I had and I have a love of live music, which has been with me for many years now. And I want to make sure that I can continue to enjoy that as I get older. So I want to make sure there's a new generation of kids coming along who want to play and have the ability to play. So it's, I love music. Live music to me is the best thing in the world. Now, do you guys have any opportunities for people to get involved and help your cause? Absolutely. We always need volunteers uh, at the events. Um, people to spread the word and share the events on Facebook and social media, um, people to donate money and instruments, and talents. If you know there are bands that want to play, we want to branch out and have more events throughout the county. Yeah, we really do want to. We want to spread to the east side of the county. This, the Polk Theater is our base. This will always be our signature event. I mean, it works. Play it forward, Polk. And if you look on our posters, you'll always see the Polk Theater is, is prominently put on the posters. Uh, they are, have been so helpful to us through all of this, but we need to get over in the east side of the county, so we're trying to find a venue over there. It will never be like this, but we're looking. We're looking. There's some bands on the east side of the county that would like to be able to participate. Uh, last year we had ten bands. This year we've only got five, so we've kind of cut back on it a little bit. I think last year most of us were about dead at the end of the day. <laughs> we're trying and to refine in, our... Including the volunteers from the Polk Theater. I think we about wore some of them out, too. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to get better. We're trying to get smarter as we move on. Yeah, well, there's so much local talent here in our Polk County area that I'm not surprised at all that you guys had people um, like the masses coming out to play for it. We do. Yes, now we need the masses to come out and watch. Yes, definitely. So um, one last final push for the event. When is it? How much is it? What time? Uh, when can people catch that event? Uh, the event is March 25th, this coming up month, end of the month, and uh, right here at the Polk Theater, starting at first band goes on at 5, doors open at 4. 4, 4.30, somewhere in that range. 4 uh, probably. Tickets are 10 bucks. Not bad Not for an bad evening of music. Five bands. Actually, five bands, eight bands if you really get down to it nine if you include Emily. So. Right. A lot of entertainment for $10. Absolutely. The theater, the theater will be selling popcorn and snacks and drinks and uh, we'll be selling t-shirts. You can get all the swag. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm excited for the event. I'm very, um, I'm hoping that I can make it out to see the event because I missed it last year and I was so bummed about it. So I wish you guys the best of luck with it for sure. Thank, Thank you. you so we much. Appreciate we'll look it. for you. All right. Play It Forward Polk is a nonprofit organization that uses music performance to raise money to purchase musical instruments for children within the music departments of Polk County Schools. Their annual event is coming up right here at the Polk Theater on March 25th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. It will feature local professional musicians in addition to performers from the local high schools. For more information, keep up with Play It Forward Polk on Facebook. Now we shift to a visual art display that spans all the way across our beautiful county. 
The Polk County History Center in Bartow has set up a citrus crate label tour for visitors to drive along the Heritage Trail with a goal to teach viewers about the history of our citrus industry in Polk County. Using citrus labels from the early 1900s is an exciting glimpse into not only the history, but also the art styles of that period. Check out some of the highlights from it. The Citrus Crate Label Tour is a way to enhance the History and Heritage Tour. We thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to create an outdoor display of citrus crate labels. This is a very important part of Polk County's citrus history. As the Polk County History Center worked with all of our heritage partners around the county to develop the Polk County History and Heritage Trail, one of our members, Harriet Rust from the Davenport Historical Society, all along said I think it would be a really interesting idea to incorporate and include citrus crate labels on this tour. So we partnered with some industry experts, we gathered some help from the Citrus Hall of Fame and also from Visit Central Florida and then again all of our heritage partners created the idea, created the concept, developed the design and the trail and the process and so once again Great ideas from Polk County's great citizens come about to tell our stories. The citrus crate labels started appearing in the early 1900s, and this is also the beginning of the Florida Citrus Exchange. They had a very specific purpose. The colors and the designs told the buyers a bit about the fruit that was inside, and the colors actually represented different quality. And all the fruit that was in the box was delicious, wonderful fruit, but they may have some discoloration on the skin, so a particular color would tell that story and represent that particular quality of fruit. So these citrus crate labels were placed on these wooden crates that traveled to the northern markets, to the buyers, until about the beginning of World War II. At that particular time, products like wood and metal were very vital to the war effort. So a lot of the transition started going from these wooden crates to corrugated paper boxes. So from early 1900s till about 1940s, 45, these crate labels were seen on these wooden crate boxes. These crate labels were used to promote Florida citrus in the northern markets. These large crates of fruit would be stored in dark warehouses. So what better way to attract a buyer's eye than through a beautifully designed, whimsical piece of art that depicts not only the product within the crate, but also a little bit about what life is like in Florida. And of course, it, they're full of beautiful lakes, beautiful women, sunshine, health, and wholesomeness. So these crate labels had a purpose, but they are beautifully designed pieces of art as well. They're highly collectible now, and they're so very vital to the remembering Polk County's, this portion of Polk County's history. From the beginning of the production of the citrus crate labels, the packing houses and the local printers relied on national artists to, do the, to, to create the designs for the citrus crate label. They were artists like Norman Rockwell influenced the design, and you can see that design in some of the labels. So although there were many, many artists involved tied locally to the printers or to the packing houses, you can see that they all have a certain flair and a look, and that is the color and the beauty and the wholesomeness of the Florida citrus industry. All the labels are special. They give us a glimpse of a period of time in our county's history that was just special, just wonderful. You know, the industry is vibrant and growing. They um, are colorful and they're just wonderful glimpses of the past. However, I would have to say I'd be most partial to Miss Polka Dot. You know, the Polk County History Center 
Our job is to tell the story of Polk County history. So I think Miss Polka Dot is probably my favorite label. Our goal in developing the Citrus Crate Label Tour was to design a, a driving tour for people to travel around Polk County and actually be on site, be in place where these packing houses were just vibrant and packing this wonderful fruit and sending it north. So the Citrus Crate Labels, these outdoor displays depicting these beautiful pieces of art, these billboards to Florida Citrus, are being installed around the county in all the municipalities and for instance in each municipality the label is representative of the packing house that actually was producing or um, packing the fruit in that particular area. A great story, a great um, location is out at the newly designed Tigertown Stadium. There is a very interesting story that goes with that. There were two players with the Detroit Tigers this period of time who actually partnered with uh, another packer grower and they, just, they developed the Auker Meyer Crowder label. There are four labels that were designed and because these two gentlemen were baseball players with the Detroit Tigers, they designed them to be Tiger labels. So these four labels that they designed are on display at the new stadium. Another one of our great partners in this project, Polk County Communications, has developed a wonderful map to help people find their way around and navigate around the 17 municipalities so that they can locate them all. And they're available just by contacting us or downloading them at our website. There are presently 29 of the Citrus Crate labels in, on display throughout Polk County. So we hope, our hope with this tour is that people will get out there, hit the road, discover Polk County's past, our heritage, and our history, and particularly that history that's related to the citrus crate labels of the citrus industry, from Davenport to Lakeland, down to Bartow, Lake Alfred, all the way over to Lake Wales. You can travel around the county and enjoy these beautiful works of art. The trail is full of beautiful images and there's a ton of history to take in and there's even more to come. There will be installation of new labels in more cities across the county and Murda says that she would like to continue the growth even further if possible. For more information or to download a copy of the trail's map, visit their website at www.polkhistorycenter.org. That's all I have in store for this month, but stay tuned for more art events coming up in your area. As always, thanks for joining me and tune in next time for more art out and about. Thank <laughs> you.